I'm Matt Harmon of Reception Perception. Let's talk Texas wide receiver Adonai A.D. Mitchell, a player that is a little polarizing in this year's draft class. But today we'll break down why he is a prospect worth getting excited for, even if there are a few red flags. Let's get into it. <laughs> All right, Texas wide receiver A.D. Mitchell. Like I said at the top, he is a very interesting, very polarizing prospect. Um, and I think the best way to say this is is just with a good meme here from my buddy, J.J. Zacharyson, who, uh, you know, does great work over at, with the Late Round Prospect Guide, Late Round Podcast. I mean, I was a guest recently. We talked about A.D. Mitchell. So go check that conversation out. But uh, basically what J.J. is sh- saying here is that A.D. Mitchell... Adonai Mitchell has a bad production profile. Yards per route run is the worst in the class. No first-round wide receiver has a worse yards per route run profile. But is the galaxy brain take here just... Adonai Mitchell is a is an outlier. I mean, he will have to be an outlier to hit. Again, to reference some of JJ's work. First-round wide receivers with a sub-60 breakout score in JJ's model. These are the wide receivers since 2011 who've had a sub-60 breakout score. Cordero Patterson, Tavon Austin, Kelvin Benjamin, Kevin White, Philip Dorsett, Josh Doxton, Henry Ruggs, Jalen Rager, and Kadarius Toney. Adonai Mitchell, if he goes in round one, will join that group with a 41.8 breakout score in JJ's model. So yes, if he does indeed go in round one, he will have to be an outlier to find fantasy success. But I want to show here with reception perception, why he has the tools to be that statistical outlier. Let's first take a look at just the overall concerning production, right? Again, I'm going to bring up another tweet from a, a, a sharp buddy of mine, Josh Norris who notes that Adonai Mitchell saw 170 career targets over three seasons of college football, one heavily shortened due to a high ankle uh, ankle sprain. Just 15 of those were from from behind the line of scrimmage to four yards downfield. Compare that to 31 career targets, 30-plus yards downfield. So he was not spoon-fed production, as Josh notes. That's the thing here is that his production profile is not great, but you have to really consider the role that Adonai Mitchell played specifically that final year at Texas, which like I wrote this in his reception perception profile. If you want to see a receiver doing NFL things, you look at A.D. Mitchell on film at Texas, which is weird because that Texas offense was very gimmicky. A lot of like typical college football stuff, but one guy on the field there is doing true NFL X receiver things. So let's pull up A.D. Mitchell's reception perception profile and talk about him as a player. So again, we're looking here at Adonai Mitchell's reception perception profile on their website, receptionperception.com. And the first thing we need to note here is that Mitchell in his RP sample lined up outside on 83% of his sampled snaps. And he was on the line for 82.8%. That is the highest rate of any top two round prospect in the RP database this season. He's a pure X receiver. And if we don't, if you don't know what an X receiver is, I'm going to show you some film to, to really kind of illustrate that. But it's just the guy that's lining on outside. He's on the line. He's not doing any pre-snap motion stuff. And typically you want this guy to be running a vertical route tree, which if you look at A.D. Mitchell's route percentage chart, look at where all the above average routes are. Again, that's the route, that's the chart on the right hand side here. It's a lot of downfield routes. He's running nine routes, post routes, dig routes, out routes. Not a lot of stuff at the line of scrimmage. Not a lot of these flat routes. I mean, 0.8% screen routes and a right around the prospect average slant route rate. So Andy Mitchell's running his routes downfield. He's running what I call like the big boy routes. And if you look at his route success chart, he's actually getting open at a pretty decent rate on some of these shorter routes, right? Like the slant route, good success rate. Curl route, right around average. The dig route, 82.4%. Very good. 
he can win downfield, right? Nine routes, corner routes, those deep out routes. I mean, that 89.5% success rate on out routes, that's awesome. You can build an NFL receiver out of this route tree right here. So what we're seeing here is this is a guy that can win at all three levels of the field. You look at his, his success rate versus coverage scores, very good against man and press, okay? Both over the 80th percentile. Now, the concerning mark is a 31st percentile success rate versus zone coverage. That's not ideal. I'm not going to get off a full rant here on this, but like you do see a lot of people saying, oh, the league's playing more zone coverage. That's bad. Okay, a couple things here. Again, we'll make this quick. I won't go super deep on this topic because you guys don't, you, who cares? But the league is playing more zone coverage than ever. Yes, that is objectively true. But a lot of those zone coverage looks turn into, you know, man match, pattern match type of looks that essentially become man coverage. A lot of times when you're the outside receiver, you're the X receiver, the rest of the team could be like in a zone look on the other side of the field and you're still getting like man press coverage on that side. You're at least getting a defender on that line of scrimmage. Like the entire defense isn't just like one static amoeba unit of a zone coverage, okay? So there could be, again, these different looks. You still have to beat man coverage, especially because man coverage rates go up on critical down and distance situations. So if you're going to be a number one receiver, you're going to be that outside guy that dictates coverages, you still got to beat man coverage. We have shown over at Reception Perception that the number one and most important trait for outside receivers is the ability to beat press man coverage. So if a guy's playing X receiver, I actually care a lot more about his man and press numbers than I do his zone coverage numbers. Although I will say, and when I talk about his player comparison at the end of this video, in order to be a true like number one like a real fringe top 10 type of receiver, you do have to be good at all three, okay? If you want to get into the elite tier of receivers, you got to be good at all three in reception perception. There's nobody that's in that elite tier that is not, that, you know, it's like got a 31st percentile success rate for a zone. You got to be better. But just to be simply a top outside receiver, to be a guy that can start on the outside to be a really quality player, you can get away with a profile like this. We've seen players like this in the league. That's not a huge concern, but it is a small red flag in terms of him ever developing into like being a true number one. But let's take a look at some film here on A.D. Mitchell to kind of show, again, some of what he can do and some of why the production profile maybe wasn't assisted by the quarterback. All right, I'm bringing up this first play here. A.D. Mitchell is at the bottom of the screen. So he's our, again, X receiver solo over there on the line of scrimmage. Not in like a condensed split or anything. That's what we're looking at. Let's play the clip. Okay, A.D. Mitchell. This is a press man rep. Little shallow in route. Again, pass doesn't get there to him, but that's a great route. I love the way A.D. Mitchell, again, to replay the clip, this is what I love about him. Gets off the line cleanly, and he's able to lean away and get separation on these in-breaking routes. Again, a really nice play by A.D. Mitchell here. Like I said, the pass is not completed. It doesn't get there to him, but these plays are all over his profile here. Pass gets batted down. Otherwise, that's a pretty nice completion. Next play up here, we're looking at A.D. Mitchell. Bottom of the screen, again, ISO receiver. Let's take a look at what happens. Again, this is a big dig route. Like we, like we saw earlier, these are the strengths of A.D. Mitchell's game. Despite the fact that he's a downfield receiver, and that's kind of how he's characterized as a downfield ball winner. He's able to win these one-on-one -on -one reps, true man coverage, in-breaking route. Again, you see a little bit of that lean into the defender, and then he breaks into the middle of the field. Probably would have liked some more yards after catch. That's not the best uh, part of his profile, but those vertical plays are pretty critical as well. Next one up here, A.D. Mitchell, bottom of the screen. Man, I love these routes from A.D. Mitchell. The outbreaking routes here. He's going to sell that inside, break it back outside. This is just, these are great man coverage reps here, just again and again. This next one here, a little simple route, just showing you that release, showing you the fluidity there at the top, bottom of the screen, boom, open, ball goes the other way. But these are the consistent routes from A.D. Mitchell that will show you if he's going to develop into a guy that gets like 120, 130 targets, he's going to win on these patterns here. I mentioned this on Reception Perception, the podcast. The amount of files I have on my computer of just A.D. Mitchell running out routes and not getting the ball or not or not getting the ball accurately delivered to him 
top of the screen, again, pretty much every rep I've shown you, I think every rep I've shown you, ISO receiver on the line of scrimmage, X receiver stuff, situation isolated right there, boom, fake it inside, snap it back outside. Man, you get this guy with a competent quarterback, he's going to be picking up first downs against man coverage on third downs all day long. Like I said, third down coverage, man coverage is up. Zone coverage is down, press coverage is up. These are the routes that I think he's going to be picking up these critical third down situations. Again, good quarterback hits that. It's a touchdown every day of the week. Quinn Ewers doesn't do it. That's A.D. Mitchell, man. He's a good route runner, okay? I like his route running in these in these isolated situations. I've compared him sort of to, and I think you see it a little bit there, especially on those in-breakers. I'll, I'll bring just that first in-breaker up again. Again, bottom of the screen here. That is a DeAndre Hopkins route through and through, man. Uh, we think of DeAndre Hopkins as that downfield contested catch guy, uh, you know, the the 50-50 the balls, and that is what makes him great. A.D. Mitchell has that in his bag too. But these, like, consistent routes to just pick up gains, man, like, that's DeAndre Hopkins stuff. These, like, kind of that lull you to sleep, rocker step at the top, boom, snap it back inside. It's very reminiscent of DeAndre Hopkins. He's definitely faster and more athletic as A.D. Mitchell. The time speed, the RAS, the relative athletic score, that's there for him, more so than it is for DeAndre Hopkins. But that's an aggressive comparison. The kind of more cautious comparison for Adonai Mitchell is George Pickens. I pull up George Pickens prospect profile because I think they're pretty similar from like where they're where they are coming into the league. Although I think AD Mitchell's a better prospect than George Pickens. They're in the same tier for me, but I think Mitchell's a little further developed. The 43rd percentile success rate versus man for George Pickens. Yeah, that's a little bit lower than AD Mitchell. But a success rate versus zone is a little bit better for Pickens. Really, it's the work against press coverage that's similar for these guys. I think they get off the line of scrimmage similarly, right? I think they are underrated in terms of their ability to separate coming out of the coming out of the league in these ISO situations on curls, slants, these like base NFL routes, comebacks for Pickens, pretty strong coming into the league. And they're obviously both ball winners. You know, you look at George Pickens. 50-50 ball situation, 75% contested catch rate coming into the league. Very similar to what we're looking at with A.D. Mitchell, where he came down with 75% of his contested targets. True X receivers that are ball winners on the outside. Now, if you followed my work at all, you know that George Pickens in the NFL, he's been a little up and down against zone coverage. He's been a little volatile in that area, but he's been good against press, right? His rookie season, he was good against press, kind of average against man, below average, well below average, sub 10th percentile against zone coverage. That's the key for A.D. Mitchell, is developing the consistency against zone coverage. And I think the way that he can do that is honestly just pick up the pace, speed up the process a little bit of running routes. Because a lot of those man coverage routes I showed you there, and, and what is so good at, good at running these routes in those situations is, yeah, like I say, it's that lull you to sleep kind of route running style where he can really kind of lull, yeah, just lull that defender to sleep and then boom, snap it back inside. Boom, snap it outside, right? That deceptive movement is great for those particular coverage situations, which he's going to face those coverage situations a lot in his projectable role as an NFL X receiver. But he's going to have zone coverage reps, especially on early downs. And if you want to be a number one receiver in the NFL, you've got to win on early downs against zone coverage. Just as the reality of it. Think about George Pickens. If you've ever had, if you had him in fantasy, I know you've been complaining about the targets, right? I know you've been complaining about ah oh, vertical routes and not enough targets. Well, it's because he's not consistent against zone coverage. That's part of the reason. Part of the reason. Don't rip me apart in the comments. It's part of the reason fraction of the story with ad mitchell like i need you to get to your landmarks faster i need you to get 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 it done get the routes run against zone so you're there at the right time you need to kind of just settle especially against on curl routes against zone comeback routes like just settle into the spot provide a reliable target get there in a hurry get open fast and just be there and be ready for be ready for the pass if mitchell develops that I can easily see him becoming one of the best receivers in this class. 
That's why, yeah, like we said at the top, in order for A.D. Mitchell to be considered like a true hit as a first-round pick, for him to be the outlier, I, I, I think he's got the skills to do it. I think he's got the skills to be better than all of those players like I listed from J.J.'s profile, right? I mean, Kelvin Benjamin probably like had the most productive season of any of those guys that we talked about at the top. And I think A.D. Mitchell can at least be that like volatile X that Kelvin Benjamin was. I always used to talk about the Kelvin coaster. We could be talking about the AD coaster for sure. No question. There are the skills in his reception perception profile that would show you he can be that guy. That volatile X receiver that you throw downfield passes to that you trust to win in man coverage situations. In order for him to develop way beyond any of those guys, there is some work that he needs to do. That is also shown in his reception perception profile. So as I tell you guys all the time, this stuff is not binary, right? There's there's not a, hey, it's, this guy's good or he's bad. There are things he's very, very good at. Much better than some of these, you know, first-round busts that have had a similar sort of production profile. No question about that. There's also no question that there are some areas where he needs to work on in order to truly hit that number one receiver ceiling that if a team drafts a receiver in their first round, they'd probably like him to develop into a number one even if it's okay if he just tops out as a very good number two. I think a team would be happy if they'd got that in the first round, especially in today's NFL when you play so many receivers and every receiver class has good players. You're just looking for these guys to hit at some level, but that's sort of the floor-ceiling combination for A.D. Mitchell and why he is a potential outlier among guys who have a production profile similar to him. That's going to do it for today's breakdown on A.D. Mitchell. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Tell me your evaluation of A.D. Mitchell in the comments, where you think he really shines, where you think he can get better. And, hey, the draft is coming up in just a few short days. Tell me your favorite landing spot for A.D. Mitchell in the, in the comments, where he can really develop into that true number one and kind of get beyond that volatile X receiver archetype. For now, subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to ReceptionPerception.com where you can get profiles on A.D. Mitchell, on all of these guys that are coming into the draft here, and the stacked prospect ranking so you know when a receiver goes off the board just how good I think they're going to be and what role they will best fit in the NFL. For now, I'll see you.